So we're, we're in the Pisac ruins right now. And to give you a uh, stark contrast to the tourists in Machu Picchu. You see anybody down there? Uh, there's, uh, there's a couple people working down there. You can't see them. See anybody up there? There's nobody. We got this side of Pisac all to ourselves right now. All to ourselves. It's the middle of the day, too. There should be gobs of people here. Beautiful ruins here, though, but... I mean, when you compare them to Machu Picchu, they're not as nice, oh, but... Okay, I stand corrected. We have another person up there. He's a guide. He works here. He just has an everyday tourist to guide around. <laughs> so like I was saying, like, these ruins, they, they compare very closely to Machu Picchu. I mean, beautiful, like, farming terraces, nicely cut stones. It's not that... It's... You know, if this place isn't if if this place isn't going to excite you, you know, Machu Picchu, Machu Picchu is not going to blow you away. Ha, ah, you want to say anything? Um, just don't smoke. <laughs> just don't be a smoker. Life tips: wear sunscreen. Don't smoke. So this is our elevation right now, which is why my is saying not to smoke. Um, if you hear that sound in the background, it is not a toilet. Yeah. Another life tip, don't litter. The steps are all a good eight feet high. And they're all over this mountain. It's like the whole bottom side of this mountain. It's crazy. It's crazy that somebody would spend all that time and energy making terracing for gardening. Now, I find this particularly interesting. They built a wall around a big rock. It's a big lava rock that they built a wall around. Oh. So I wanted to go up there. But, uh, but that's not happening. They have it roped off and life's not fair. Please don't let me die by a yama attack. Are those yamas or alpacas? I don't know. I think they're yama. Because they're like, look at their long hair. Yeah. I think the fatter ones, there's both. There's alpaca and llama. I think that one that is scratching itself right now is a llama. He's and a baby. The ones with the so if we could find some... Uh, professional out there on yamas and alpacas uh, and could somebody respond to this post and let me know what these are thank you
I tumble. And uh, on the other side of the runes, you probably saw earlier in the clip where we filmed this rune with a bunch of people. And I'm so happy that there's maybe like a tenth of the people that were or that are going to be here probably in the next few hours. So we get this place to ourselves, kind of, because obviously there's no one around us. And it's kind of nice. And uh, just kind of kicks off our adventure in the Sacred Valley. Coming back from Machu Picchu, we can get to see some, some ruins with less tourists. So, yay! Come on! Join us. Apparently, stacking rocks here is a thing, but none of them are anywhere near impressive as Brannon's. Brannon is a longtime friend of mine from high school, and the shit that guy can do with rocks, amazing, amazing. That right there is where um, the uh, ball rock down in the Dwarven Caves. This is where the ball rock was um, chasing the fellowship. And that right there, that's the section that broke off. We found it. You all thought it was in New Zealand. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh -uh. That was that was most definitely in Peru. I think we're coming to a little bit of a theme on things. Go to ruins early in the morning. Don't do big mass group tours. That's about it. So this is really nice during the evening. This is blaring sun. I mean, anytime afternoon and it's hot and there's tons of people. This is really nice and comfortable right now. Do ruins early in the morning. <laughs> the Incan farming site of Morai. They dug down and made all these rings to uh, try to find more water in this area and it also helped with cultivating the crops. Uh, it had a second benefit of stabilizing the hills as well. So you'll see them around a lot of the Incan communities. This is a huge one though. The water that fills all these baths is here. It's a little bit warm, like a hot springs, but not hot hot, it's just a little warm and is very, very salty. Like much saltier than the ocean. It sits in these vats for three to six days, evaporates out, it gets scraped off and is used for salt. So I tell my line cooks to salt their pasta water like the ocean and maybe I need to think about changing that to salt your, salt your water like the salt flats in Peru. Maybe that's, maybe that's a good thing. In reality, it's actually, it's a little too salty. Um, even for that, it's, it's much too salty. For like pasta water, you'd have to dilute it by half. It's, it's very, very, very salty water. 